What's going on you guys? So right now we are in SF and today I'm going to be mixing and mingling with a couple of old friends and a new friend of mine and basically what I'm talking about is this thing right here. This is the Canon A1. Now I got rid of this guy when I went out and got my Voigtlander Bessa and I missed it dearly but um, it was too much of a pain I guess you could say so I picked another one up and also picked up a 35mm 2.8. So that's the setup I'm going to be shooting with today, my old friend and also this new friend here Kodak P3200 T-Max and uh, we're gonna put this to the test we're gonna put these two together it's pretty sunny out still uh, the sun's gonna go down within an hour or two so we're gonna try to get some street photos and get some good stuff let's get it Yes, the Canon A1 is officially back in the collection. Oh man, I miss you so much. Now, if you guys are wondering why I have such a strong connection with the Canon A1, um, it's because a while back when I purchased my Voigtlander Bessa R2A, uh, to an extent that is a fairly expensive camera, especially when you pair it up with a lens. Uh, I sold off a bunch of film cameras within my collection to help fund that purchase. And so 
The Canon A1 was actually sold within that and unfortunately that was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made because the Canon A1, you know, I didn't realize it at the time but had such a significant role in me shooting film. This camera is amazing, it is buttery smooth, uh, I put it up there with some of my favorite SLRs of all time. I also picked up 35mm 2.8 and uh, the Canon A1 that I found was actually new in the box which is the first camera or film camera at least that I've ever had that was still packaged inside of its original box. So. Super dope purchase, super good price, and I'm just overall extremely happy that we have this back into the collection. So folks, with that being said, let's just go ahead and get started to what we were talking about originally, and that is Kodak T-Max P3200. Kind of started there because it's a long name. You can call it P3200, T-Max, I don't know, uh, but this film is a killer film for a number of reasons, but I don't want to spoil it right away. Uh, let's just go ahead and get started first with the grain. Now the grain on these photos are actually pretty fine, especially being 3200 speed, I expected it to be more noisy, something that's so dirty looking and, you know, grungy, just so much grain, but Kodak T-Max 3200 actually proved me wrong. Um, I'm fairly impressed with the grain. It's a fine grain, uh, it looks really good, grain structure is good, and it almost kind of gives off this photojournalist, uh, classic street photography black and white look. So if that's a look that you're interested in getting, I highly recommend picking up a roll and trying it out. Now developing. Developing is the world for T-Max 3200. If, you're, if you don't develop at home, you can go ahead and skip over this part, but for the folks that do develop at home, you kind of want to hear this because I made a couple mistakes with this film. T-Max 3200, when you develop this stuff because it is such a high ISO film, of course you're going to leave it in the developer longer. Now here was the issue, if you guys use Kodak HC110 as a developer, use Dilution B because I made the mistake first of all by not checking online, but I used Dilution A and I ended up getting the developing times mixed up and I severely underexposed my first roll of T-Max 3200. When you underexpose the film, the film looks absolute garbage. It looks so dark and you know, just like any black and white film that's underexposed, it's not gonna look good. Uh, here's an example of the images right here I took with the uh, T-Max 3200 when it was underexposed because I didn't leave it in the developer long enough. Long story short, Check your developing times and your dilutions and uh, you really got to nail the developing process for T-Max 3200. Alright, so now I want to talk about the shooting experience with the P3200. Now, of course with the Canon A1 it was a blast, but this is something you have to remember. If you are going to be shooting in daylight, which you can do with this, uh, this film, you got to realize and keep in mind that this is a super high speed film. So folks, pretty much 99% of the time you're going to be shooting in an F16 or F22 if it's sunny outside because you want to close that aperture up so much to the point where, you know, barely any light gets in there because it's such a high, uh, highly sensitive film to light. Now, I think P3200, unfortunately I didn't do this, is ideal for nighttime photography. If you guys are into shooting night stuff, shooting night scenes, uh, maybe even portraits at night, if you want to do that on black and white film, this is the film to shoot on. P3200 is amazing. Um, I've seen examples of other people's work uh, shooting low light P3200 and it is beautiful, man. Uh, the grain actually becomes a little bit more enhanced, uh, but it kind of blends with the darks and blacks if you use it correctly. Shoot this film at night or if you guys are going to be shooting this in daytime, shoot it at a high aperture like F16 or F22. You don't want to overexpose it and make it look ugly. Now, where does this film stand? Who is this film for? Well, like I said earlier, if you're into that documentary photography, photojournalist or classic street photography look with the black and white and all that grain, Kodak P3200 is not gonna disappoint you. You're gonna get that look. But one of the things that I feel like you have to watch out for is the way you shoot it. It's very easy to go the wrong path with this film because um, you know a lot of people want to shoot wide open or they want to shoot something like you know a large aperture to get that bokeh, especially when you're first starting shooting film. That's kind of the rave right now. If you are gonna be shooting this stuff, you have to stop your aperture down to like F8, F11, F16, depending on the lighting conditions. Now honestly, I don't see P3200 being an everyday film. It's kind of like a specialty film, like a tool that you need to do one particular job. And that is to shoot it when there's not enough uh, available light uh, with the high speed. Otherwise, if you're gonna look for an everyday black and white film or something that's gonna give you consistent results every single time, check out HP5 or Tri-X. Those are the two standards that pretty much every film shooter nowadays uses. Uh, but like I said, P3200, I feel like is just there for when you need it.
All right, you guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for my first impressions on the Kodak T-Max P3200. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, just comment down below what you guys think. I wanna know uh, exactly what you think about this film, how you shot it, or if you've shot it before. Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, before we go ahead and end this episode, I wanna announce that we are doing a print sale on my Instagram or my website. If you click the link in the description down below, it'll lead you over to my website where you can purchase any print, uh, whether it's on my Instagram or it's anything from the videos, absolutely any print. I have a printer at home now, it's a Canon Pro 100, and so I print out all my stuff. And uh, yeah, here's some samples of them. This is Lady in Bus, and it's printed on Red River Fine Art paper. Uh, I also have this one that we took two weeks ago, two to three weeks ago. And so yeah, they are all on eight and a half by 11, and the actual print size should be something like six by nine. So uh, if you guys are interested in purchasing a print, they will be up on the website, and it's just gonna be the item that says, you know, choose any print, and you can purchase it there. Thank you guys for tuning in to another King James video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below and leave a comment, like I said, on what you think about the Kodak T-Max 3200 film. Update on the giveaway. I've now racked up all of the prizes. And so, so the giveaway video is gonna be in the works sometime this week. I say expect it to be up sometime next week or you know within that vicinity. So folks, thank you guys so much once again for 13,000 subscribers. And as always, Minota Gang. Whew.